So this is Sarah Hardy at the University of Maine at Farmington, and this is a video tutorial in how to use R Commander to do analysis of variance. Now, analysis of variance is an extension of our two sample t-tests, assuming equal variance, but it can be used for situations where you have more than two groups. So for purposes of this um, video, I've already selected the data set called insects. And in this data set, they're testing different colors of traps and how many insects are caught. So we have one, two, three, four different colors of traps. So the kind of graphs that you want to make are the same as those that we made for two sample t-tests. We can do box plots by group. Okay, so our group is trap color, okay. Variables pick one, okay. Okay. And here we can see our different box plots for our different colors. We can also do a plot of means. And here are factors trap color, responses insects caught. We can select different choices for our error bars. I'll leave it at standard errors. And OK. And so now we have a plot of the means for each of these different colors. So to do that analysis of variance itself, I'm going to go to um, statistics, means, one way ANOVA. OK, my group is trap color, responses insects caught. And I'm also going to check this pairwise comparison of means. We'll see what that does in just a minute here. So I'm going to say OK. And down in our output window, um, we get quite a bit of output. First of all, here is our analysis of variance table with our p-value, a very small. It also gives us. Um, the means and standard deviations and the sample sizes for each group. And then because we checked that confidence, pairwise confidence intervals, it's going to give us, for each possible pair, it's giving us a confidence interval. And by pair, I mean um, pairs of the levels of the explanatory variable. It also gives us a plot of these confidence intervals. And so we see here that we have um, green um, versus blue. Notice that we have 0 here. And since 0 is not included in that interval, that would indicate that there is a significant difference in the amount of insects caught between green and, green and blue. So the next thing I'd like to look at is how we do uh, analysis of variance when we have more than one explanatory variable. So uh, with one explanatory variable, that's referred to as one-way analysis of variance. So now we're going to look at two-way analysis of variance. And uh, the data set I've already selected, I've called rat swim data. And this website here that I found um, with uh, this researcher from Merck Research Labs has posted favorite data sets. And this is one of those. And it deals with um, rats who are um, given a certain doses of uh, investigational compound. One male and one female pup from each litter is sent through a swimming maze. And there's two trials. In the second trial, the escape channel is moved. So that's that's the basic idea. So the data on the website uh, looks like this. I have reformatted that to uh, spreadsheet and then read it into R. So it now shows like this. We have variable sex for male and female, dosage, the trial first and second, uh, the litter that the rat pup comes from, and how many attempts it took them to go through the swim maze before they uh, climbed out of the exit tunnel. 
Okay, so sex, dose, uh, and trial are all um, explanatory variables. And there's one thing that we're going to have to do before we get started, and some of you may have to do this in your project. Now, notice that even though dose and trial, we're going to treat those as categorical variables, they actually appear as numbers. So we're going to go over here to data and manage variables in the active data set, convert numeric variables to factors, and so I'll first of all pick dose. Um, it, it's asking me if I want a new variable name or if I want to overwrite the old variable name. Um, it's okay to leave this um, as the called dose. Okay, so I'm going to overwrite that. So it's going to come up with this little pop-up, and it's going to want us to type in what we want these uh, to be called. So, or wait a minute, I'm going to call it dose. Dose zero. Dose 3.125. Once you get those typed in, you can hit OK. And I also want to do the same thing for trial. So manage variables, convert, and I'll go ahead and call this trial. Okay. Okay, and so we'll hit OK for the trial. Okay, so let's first look at a graph, and for our graph, what we're going to look at is plot of means, and we're going to pick both factors. So I'm going to look at uh, the two factors of dose and trial. Use control to select multiple ones. And I'm going to hit OK. And now what we'll see on your plot of means is that there'll be separate lines for uh, the two different trials. So there'll be one line for trial one and one line for trial two. This is called an interaction plot. And there's always two different ways to do an interaction plot. And sometimes one way is just easier to interpret than another way. So if we want to look at it the other way, we can just copy that line, paste it, and I'm just going to change the order here so that trial comes first and then dose. Okay, I'm going to rerun that line. Submit. And so, see, the difference here is that now uh, trial 1 and trial 2 appears on the x-axis, and we have a different line for each one of the four doses. To do the analysis of variance, we're going to again go to statistics, variances, no, excuse me, means, multi-way ANOVA, and then we're going to pick our two factors here, and then hit OK, and it's going to give us um, our analysis of variance table, which shows dose, trial, and the dose-trial interaction. It's going to give us a table of means and a table of standard deviations. So how these tables are set up is, so for example, the mean when dose is zero for the trial one is 6.02. The mean when dose is zero and for trial two is 7.5, and so on and so forth. So the next step, if one of your factors or the interaction is significant, is to look at the Tukey 
honest significance difference plots. Unfortunately, there's no uh, menu driven way of doing this, and so we have to use actual R commands in the script window or in a separate script file. Okay, so my first step is that I'm going to do that, and I'm going to create a model called AOV out, which equals AOV, which stands for analysis of variance, with attempts as a function of dose plus trial plus dose colon trial, which is the interaction term, and then comma data equals rat swim data, or whatever data set you're using at the time. So my first step is going to be to submit that. And then my next step is to make the two key HSD plots. So I'm going to show you this in, in steps, showing you what adding various pieces to this statement does. So if you're following along, you might want to wait a second until I have the complete statement done to enter it. So if I issue this command, plot Tukey HSD with the ANOVA model, AOV out in this case, and I hit submit, what's going to happen is that it's actually going to make three plots very quickly. You might not even notice the first two and the third plot that's going to make is uh, the last one, the interaction. So the first thing I want to do is tell it which one of these plots I want. And I can say which equals one for, in this case, dose. Two would give me the plot for trial. And three would give me the dose interaction, or dose trial interaction plot, which is actually the one that we see right here. So let me start by looking at the plot for dose. Okay, so now we have just one plot, and we see that we actually have another problem here, and that's that all the labels uh, don't fit on the y-axis. So the next thing I'm going to do is change the direction of those labels so that it's horizontal. And to do that, I'm going to add a piece here, LAS equals 2. Now, notice you know, R is very sensitive to where you place your parentheses and your commas. Things won't work if they don't get in the right place. The which equaled 1 went inside the Tukey HSD function. The LAS equals 2 is going outside of that function, but inside of the plot function. So you need to have the comma after this parenthesis. Okay, so now let's see what happens when I submit that plot. So what happened is that we fixed one problem and we created another problem because now uh, the labels <coughs> go off the plot. So to fix that problem, we're going to issue a par statement. And the par statement is the same statement we use when we set our plotting grid with a different argument here. And our argument now, instead of MF row that we've seen before, is OMA, standing for outer margin area. Uh, the order of this is that this is the, the bottom, the left side, the top, the right side. So we want more area on the left side. So I'm going to change the default, which is 0, to 10. which is going to give us 10 more spaces on that side. That should be enough. So I'm going to submit that. And then I'm going to submit my plot again. OK, so it looks like maybe I didn't even need 10. Now everything fits nicely on the plot. So as long as we're using the commands, there's one nice feature that we can do when we do it this way that is not available on the menu-driven version. And 
that is that we can force these to be in the order such that all the differences are positive, which makes it easier to interpret because you don't have to, for example, look here and say, let's see, dose 3.125 minus dose 0, the mean is negative, that means dose 0 is greater than 3.125. So I can add one more piece to this. And that piece is, and it goes inside of the Tukey HSD, and that is ordered equals true. And when I do that, So note that's ordered equals true with a D on the end. So as I'm saying, when I do that, now everything, all the differences are arranged so that they're positive. So back where uh, this difference that we were looking at before, uh, dose 0 minus do dose 3.125, is now positive, so we know that dose 0 is greater than 3.125, or all of the ones in the first place are greater than the ones in the second place. Now, for this particular example, notice all the intervals do contain 0, which is what we would expect because in our analysis of variance, that factor was not significant. So actually you probably would not be making the pairwise plots for this particular example. You would only need to make them for a trial, which was significant, and notice that that one is going to be somewhat trivial because there's only two levels so there's only going to be one uh, confidence interval here. So I'm doing this by cutting and pasting that statement. And the only thing I'm changing here is which equals 2, which is now going to give me the trial. And I'll hit submit. And over here is our confidence uh, interval. Notice that the plot doesn't even have the zero line because it's zero is not in the interval and the computer is automatically trying to stretch out the axis as far as possible. And we actually already knew that this difference was significant because we knew the factor was significant. And so just to be complete, I can make my last plot of the interaction by doing which equals 3 and obviously then there's a lot more interaction terms. So I think that is everything that I need to tell you about analysis of variance with R and R Commander. So thank you for watching. Bye.